أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. الله الرحمن الرحيم. والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. My my talk today will not be long because normally the idea was just to have a brief about what is said during the day in order to share it, you know, with uh, with uh, people that were not there. But most of you, you were there during the day, so no need for that. No need, you know, to give you a brief. And I will just actually develop some points maybe that I did not touch upon during the day about this re relationship between universe and revelation. Of course, we talked uh, a long time about this problematic relationship in Islamic tradition amongst especially amongst theologians and we said that did this um, has had consequences on epistemology on, and methodology now we will not go into those complex debates between you know theological schools about epistemology and about you know the um, the epistemological value of universe and fitra, we will not go into that complex, you know, issues. We will just talk uh, from the perspective of the revelation of the text, how we can, out of the text, figure out, figure the relationship out between revelation and uh, universe. So I'll, I'll skip all of those issues related to the, those debates and we will go straight away to you know how revelation actually articulates this epistemology or this re relationship between universe and revelation here first point is that we have to know that according to the revelation according to the quran we can distinguish we, or we can state that um, Islam, before being a, a revealed religion, is actually a universal order. And we can find this all over the Quran. For instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَغَيْرَ دِينِ اللَّهِ يَبْغُونَ وَلَهُ أَسْلَمَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ طَوْعًا وَكَرْهًا وَإِلَيْهِ يُرْجَعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing those who re are rejecting religion and he says to them uh, or about them does do they want something uh, something else or or other than the religion of Allah while everything that is in our is in heaven and in earth walahu aslam is muslim is submitting to him walahu aslam man fi samawati wal ard so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that how can you reject re religion? Well, this is already the universal order. So how can you want to be an exception of this order that is already, you know, regulating the universe? This is Islam because everything in universe is already uh, obeying uh, 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 or, you know, following the divine will. So you are not an exception. On that, and we have other verses. For instance, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Alam tara anna Allah yusabbihu lahu man fi man fi al-samawati wal-ardi wal-tayru saafat kullun qad alim salatahu wa tas wa tasbiha wallahu alim bima yafalun." So, uh, did did you not see that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is praised by those who are in the heaven and on earth? Uh, and you know the, and the, 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 the bird that are spreading their wings in the sky and each one of them so each one of the elements of the universe know exactly how to pray God and to glorify him so each element in the universe is already you know Muslim so Islam as a universal order precedes Islam as a revelation Islam revelation as a revelation came later uh, and the Islam as an order was already there, actually. And here, as you see, we have the universal and the revealed will. So the universal will is this, you know, this order that is, you know, uh, um, by which the universe is regulated, this divine order, this divine will. And revealed will is the, the will that is articulated throughout Revelation. And this, in the Quran, is 
of sometimes called Nur, sometimes called Mizan, sometimes called Haq, sometimes called Huda, and also like we, say, we, like we just have seen now, sometimes called Islam. So let me, let me give you an example about uh, Nur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, so Nur as what? As a universal order or the universal divine will and also as the revealed will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. Allah is the light, the nur of the heavens and the earth. So here, this is the universal order. Allah is the light of, you know, the heaven and the earth. This, this concerns the universal order. And then he says, this is, this is the, the guidance that is related to the, to the universe. And then he says, مَثَلُ نُورِهِ Now he, he will go and talk about the, the guidance, the light that is related to a human being. مَثَلُ نُورِهِ كَمِشْكَاتٍ فِيهَا مِصْبَاحٍ So the, the, the example of the light, of the guidance that is given to a human being, كَمِشْكَاتٍ فِيهَا مِصْبَاحٍ is like um, a niche, which is you know, an opening in, in the wall, a niche in which there is a, a light. المسباح كالزجاجة uh, uh, the, 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 the light uh, is, uh, is as, a, as, as a glass الزجاجة uh, الله نور السماوات والأرض مثل نوره كمشكات فيها مسباح المسباح uh, في, في, في زجاجة so the light is in a glass الزجاجة كأنها كوكب ضري يوقد من من شجرة مباركة زيتونة. So this uh, this this glass is like a shining a, a shining uh, an astr, a, a, a shining uh, uh, how do you call it in English? An astr. Uh -huh. Lamp. Yeah, a shining lamp or a shining star. Uh, who is enlightened from, uh, from a blessed tree. Zaytuna, which is an um, uh, olive tree. Zaytuna la sharqiyatin wa la gharbiya. An olive tree that does not come from the east, neither from the west. Yakadu zaytuha yudhi'u wa law lam tamsas hunar. It's light, uh, oh, it's oil from this uh, olive tree almost give its light without being touched by the fire. So the, the, the scholars of Tafsir here, they said this is a metaphor that is um, comparing the human nature, human fitra, to this uh, lamp which is in a glass, which is in a niche, and which is shining with a, an oil that is coming from a tree that is nor, nor for the, for, from the east nor from the west, which it's not from this world. And this is the fitra. So what, what is the fitra? It's something that is giving light from inside, from, from inside the human being, this olive oil. And it does not come from, neither from the west, from the east, so it's not from this world. It's not from here. And you know, we know that the fitra, it comes from, from the, the spiritual fitra, comes from the ruh. The ruh which is a divine insufflation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gave the human being a divine insufflation, this ruh. And this, this divine insu insufflation does not come from this world. It's a, it's a divine, it comes from the divine order. This, this, this is what you find in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الرُّوحِ They ask you about the ruh, about the spirit. قُلِ الرُّوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي Say the, the spirit is from the, from the order of my Lord. It's not from here, it's from the order of my Lord. وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And you, you only got a little knowledge about it. So we don't know a lot about it because it's not from here. So this is, this is the, this olive oil. يَكَادُ زَيْتُهَا يُضِيءُ وَلَوْ لَمْ تَمْسَسْ هُنَارُ Who almost actually guide the human being to the ethics, to the ethical, to the good without being touched by fire. And here the scholars say the fire is the revelation. 
And the verse concludes by Nurun ala nur, light upon light. So we have the, the initial light, which is in the human being, is, the, is this fitrah, this olive oil that is not from the west, neither from the east. It's already there and it's already actually, it has already the potential to guide the human being towards the light. And then comes this fire who complete this light, which is revelation, nurun ala nur, so light upon light. So here we see the nur as a divine order because Allah says, Allah nur Allah nur Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. And then we have the light as the fitra, the human, you know, inner um, uh, 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 of natural uh, status. And then we have the light as revelation. So we have the universal and the revealed will uh, uh, referred by with nur, light. But this can also be referred, by, um, referred to by the concept of mizan, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, رَفَعَهَا وَوَضَعَ الْمِيزَانِ He is the one who established the heavens, or uh, um, he is the one who um, elevated the, the heaven, the heaven. So, which means he created the universe, Mizan, and he established the mizan. The mizan, this, this, it's the this balance that is, you know, um, operating in the universe, and this also relates to the divine, to the divine universal will, the mizan. And he says then, Allah fil mizan. Your purpose as a human being is to not disturb this balance, and this balance is in the universe and is also inside of you. So your mission is to keep this balance and do not disturb it uh, in the universe, so in our environment, but in yourself also. For instance, the human being is, uh, uh, con consists out of a number of aspirations. He's composed out of, out of a number of aspirations, which are from his fitra, natural in him. He aspires to beauty, he aspires to justice, he aspires to happiness, he aspires to freedom, he aspires to possess possessions, uh, he aspires to pleasure, etc., etc. He has a number of aspirations and inclinations. Now, it's possible, th those are natural, those are initially good and ethical, because he, this, is how, this, this is how he is constituted. But those aspirations, the balance between those aspirations can get disturbed. For instance, his aspiration for position, which is initially good, initially ethical, can disturb or can overpass its limit, and, and it can disturb uh, or overcome the aspiration for justice. And then he will be unjust to possess. This is possible. And now his mission is to keep all those aspirations uh, in balance within his, within his inner world. So this is the mizan in the universe and in the um, and in the human reality. But also the mizan is in revelation because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Allahu al-ladhi nazzal al-kitaba bil-haqi wal mizan." So. Once again, here we see the universal and the revealed will referred to as al mizan, and we see here how you know once again, the universe and revelation actually are uh, two things that are you know um, uh, we, um, uh, responding to the same logics and and are uh, regulated by the by the same order, uh, and, and and we see once again how revelation comes. Uh, to uh, complete or to make sure that a human can uh, keep this mizan that is already there in, 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 uh, in the universe. So the good is already there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بَعْدَ إِصْلَاحِهَا Do not corrupt the earth after it is إِصْلَاحِهَا uh, while the earth is good, while the earth is saliha, so it's, 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 uh, it's, it's he healthy. So 
the healthiness, the goodness of the earth, of the universe, was already there before Revelation. And so Revelation just come to tell us not to just only follow Revelation, but follow also what is already there in terms of goodness, in terms of you know, harmony that is already existing. This is the concept of Mizan. Then we have the concept of Haqq, which also refers to both universe and revelation. For the universe, Allah subhanahu wa says, خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِالْحَقِّ He created the heavens and the earth with al haqq with the truth. So the truth is once again referring to this divine order that is regulating the universe. And for the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa says, وَبِالْحَقِّ أَنزَلْنَاهُ وَبِالْحَقِّ نَزَلْ It is with the haqq that we have revealed it, and it is with the haqq that it, it came down. So the same thing, both are regulated by the same order, the haqq here and the haqq in, um, in Revelation. Um, also the concept of Huda, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the universe, الذي أعطى كل شيء خلقه ثم هدى He is the one who gave every element of the universe its creation, its shape, ثم هدى And then he guided it. He gave it huda. So here huda is something that is related to the universal order, the universal, the divine universal will once again. And this is the same thing for the Quran. Huda للمتقين It's a guidance, it's a huda for those who are pious. So once again, the same order, the same, uh, the, 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 yeah, this, this, the same um, uh, guidance that is present in universe and present in, um, uh, in revelation. So here we see how Islam as universal order precedes Islam as revelation because the universe, the, 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 the purpose of revelation at the end of the day, like we said, is to keep the balance that is already there in the universe. So we have the universe, and at the end of the day, this Islam as a universal order, like we said, Islam as a revelation came to enable the human being to uh, enter into this universal harmony. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya yuhal ladheena amanu dkhulu fi silmi kaffa. Oh, who you believe, enter into the peace, in, the, the peace entirely. Enter entirely into the peace. So the purpose of the human being is to enter into this universal peace that is already established. And the revelation came in order to enable human being to enter uh, into this uh, Islam, uh, uh, which is this universal order. Now, fitrah precedes the revelation. Revelation is only there to confirm it. Uh, like we said before, the Qur Quran, I'm sorry, I'm not changing the, I'm changing on my computer, but not on the screen. Okay. This was a, Okay. So in the previous one you can see how Islam, you know, is about uh, all of those dimensions, this universal order, uh, the, the, the spiritual fitra and bio biological fitra which is already in a human being, and then there is Islam as a revelation. So fitra precedes revelation because like we saw in the previous verse in Surah An-Nur, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was telling us that this human essence, this spirit, this human nature which is, in the, which is, uh, which, uh, uh, is the real essence of the human being, is almost guiding the human towards his function, towards the good, without 
ha having the need to be touched by the fire, by the revelation. And here, Ibn Taymiyyah is saying that if it was not for the obstacles that were facing the human being, the human being would have been a, a, a perfect Muslim, a perfect ethical being f by nature and without even having to abide by revelation or by religion. By the only fact of his fitrah. But why does he need revelation? Because the Quran say, says, almost, he's almost guided by this fitrah, by this oil, uh, without being touched by fire, without revelation, almost. But he needs the revelation because when, when we are in this world, of course, we have a fitrah which is, uh, which, which is pure initially. Each newborn is born according to the fitrah. And we have actually a physical envelope, a body, which is are also guided by God. We are not the ones who are controlling the way our body functions. But the fact is that when the human being is in this world and in this body, he will have to face this world. And he will have a function. And this function is to keep the balance. And so, in order to keep this balance, this fitrah alone will be not enough. And he will need the guidance of revelation in order to perform this function. The other elements of the universe, does not, they do not re need revelation because they, they are already um, uh, guided to, towards their function because they don't have this mission of keeping the balance. It's done in a systematic way. Now, the spiritual fitra and the biological fitra so are already there before revelation, but revelation so came after to enable him to keep this spiritual fitra uh, um, healthy and to keep the biological fitra healthy also and to keep this balance. Major human needs are addressed by the universal well, not by revelation in the first place, which means that, you know, um, in order to perform his function, the human being has some major needs. And those major needs, needs actually are already addressed by the universal will, so by what's in the universe and in the fitra, in the first place. And the revelation came only to um, uh, complete this. For instance, this is why uh, According to Rashid Rida, when he's talking, when he's doing the tafsir of the verse where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "وَعَبْدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَبِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَبْنِ السَّبِيلِ etc." So uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Worship Allah, وَلَا تُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا," and do not take any uh, other besides of Allah. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And be good with your parents. وَبِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَكِينَ And those who are related to you, uh, and those who are orphans, and those who are poor, etc. And Rashid Rida says, why didn't he mention, why didn't he mention children? Why di didn't he say that you should be good also to your children? Of course, it's maybe mentioned ذِي الْقُرْبَى, they are there. But they did not, he, did, he did not mention them by name. While well, parents are also their qurba, but he mentioned them by name. And also in Islam, we see this everywhere. We have this concept of uquq al-walidayn, the, the disobedience. The Islam contains disobedience and you know, um, bad behavior with the parents. But he did not explicitly contain bad behavior in the same way with children, etc. So Rashid Rida is saying here, because you know, we, we, don't do, we don't need revelation for that. Because we are ready from our fitra, instinctively we will take care of our children. So this was not delegated to revelation. The care of the children was not delegated. You know, the, 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 the scholars of Islam, they distinguish between al-waza al-shari al waza al-fitri for some of them, which means there is uh, a religious stim stimulus, something which 
you do by, by religious conviction. For instance, why do you pray? This is the religious stimulus. It's the religion who stimulates you to pray. And you have also the natural stimulus. Why do you eat? It's not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells, tells you to eat. We don't, we don't need revelation to eat. Because this is delegated to what? To the natural stimulus. Now here, taking care of the children, we don't need revelation to do this. So it was not delegated to the religious stimulus. It was delegated to the natural stimulus. It's already natural there. And why? Because taking care of the children is to, in, 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 in uh, our for fulfilling of the function for which we were created, it's more important than taking care of the parents. And this is why it was not delegated to a revelation, it was delegated to the universe. Because if it was delegated to, and this is for, for instance also eating, the same thing. Eating is very important for performing our function. If we don't eat anymore, we will die. And reproduction, same thing. And this is why it was not delegated to the revelation. Because if the revelation came to tell you, okay, you have to reproduce, then humanity will vanish. Because most, most of the people will not abide by a revelation. And if the revelation came to, to tell you, without giving you a natural stimuli, eat, then how many people will eat and abide by revelation? But it's essential to survive as a humanity and to perform your function as a humanity. And same thing here, according to Rashid Rita, for taking care of the children. If it's, it was delegated to the, to the religious stimulus, then most of the people will not abide by and humanity will vanish because you know this child needs his, his, his parents more than, than the parents need their child. And this is why the good behavior toward, towards the parents was not in the first place delegated to the natural stimuli, stimulus, but, but to the revelational stimulus, to the religious stimulus. And if you don't do it, you are in, in sin, but you don't have the same natural um, stimulus that will make you take care of your parents, then, you ha then that you have the natural stimulus that make you uh, take care of your uh, children. So here this il illustrates somehow how the major human needs are addressed by the universe in the first place and not by revelation. Revelation only came to f complete the universe and the fitra with the things that are actually, and the things that are essential are there already in the fitra and in the universe. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm again talking without changing the. Okay. Then we will, we will conclude by, by a question. The role of reason and universe in applied Islamic ethics. We have saw during the last two days that in Islamic tradition, there is an issue about you know, the role of revelation and or the relationship between revelation and universe. And your universe not, does not only include you know, the nature, but includes, like I said, also the fitra. This is part of the universe. Includes also the human action, his history, this human, soci human social life, and etc. All of this is part of the universal will, because you know, the way of, that the human functions, psychologically, socially, historically, etc., this is also part of the divine will. So all of this is the universe. Now, what is the role of reason and universe in applied Islamic ethics? This is a big question that was, you know, that created a lot of debates in history, like we saw the last two days. And I give you an example, uh, which is a question. The study of the universe, human or natural, teaches us that this or that is healthy for the environment, body, spirit, intelligence, society, etc. So that it is a maslaha, it is something that is beneficial for the human. Does this establish a religion obligation to stick to it or not? Is the question clear? So we have studied the universe, 
whether it is the natural universe or the psychological uh, reality of human being or social reality of human being, etc., etc. And we came to the conclusion that out of this study that this thing or that thing is healthy or is good for the environment or for the body or for the spirit or for the intelligence or for society, etc. Is that conclusion, it, does that conclusion establish a religion, a religious obligation? Should I religiously stick to that conclusion or not? Is it an obligation to stick to that conclusion or not? The balance, you should. Well, here we have the re replies of the two major, you know, trends in the question uh, of, you know, in, in that question, the question of, it's about tahsin and taqbih, like we saw before. The Mu'tazilites Mu'tazili, Mu will say, yes, so we, sh we, sh we should stick to it, because it's also a matter of divine will. What we have concluded out of the study of the universe is also part of the divine will. We have concluded the divine will, established by the universal order, except of course for human action and universal cal calamities like, like we saw before, Mu'tazili said that this, not, this, this does not belong to the divine will. So reason here is dependent on the divine will, according to the Mu'tazilites. According to the Ash'arites, they will say no, unless revelation testify to this. So this conclusion even though no, even though we this tell us this study tell us that this is good or this is bad, it does not um, translate in a religious obligation. Why? Because, like we saw before, their epistemology is that revel, uh, universe does not say anything about good or bad, unless revelation testify to it. Okay. This is one possible question according to the Asharites. Another possible question according to the Asharites is, yes, this, is the, this would be the reply of Shatibi. Yes, but the obligation is a matter of revelation, established by the revelational order. Because it recommends good and disapproves evil, the identification of what is good in the example cited is only possible after learning of the revelation. What does it mean? It means that this is Shatibi's you know, uh, theory, it means that if you study the universe uh, and you, you, can, you can conclude out of the universe what is good and what is bad, uh, but this conclusion actually only came after revelation, which means that according to Shotby, the Revel you have been conditioned by revelation in such a way that you're not, you are now able to identify the good and the bad. But who, who did you, who, who made you identify it? It's not the universe itself, it's the revelation because you are conditioned that way. You know that, you, you know that this is bad because this is how, what revelation taught you and, not this is, and it's not uh, intrinsic in the universe. Would it be the fitra also that taught you? No, because according to Asharite epistemology, fitra is also, also neutral, it's not, it's not good or evil uh, per se. Now, I will give you a, a humble opinion on this question. You know, this question is very present in Usul Fiqh. You'll find it in all the books of Usul, you know, etc. A very humble opinion on this uh, subject is, first of all, it is oblig obligatory to hold on both orders. For both indicate divine wisdom. So we should abide by both orders, whether it's the divine universal will or the divine revealed will because both of them indicate the divine wisdom and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking when he talks about universe he's talking about the sunnah of Allah sunnatul, sunnatullah so this is the sunnah of Allah uh, which is you know the sunnah which is a, 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 the, an order that Allah has placed so it is his will Second thing, there is no possible opposition between creation and revelation because they come from the same source, express the same wisdom, and have the same objectives. So this is clear, I think we have explained this several times. Uh, third point is, all that is wanted by the universal will is wanted by the revealed will, but, it, but what is established by one is not necessarily detailed by the other. So, which means that 
everything that Allah has wanted throughout the universal will, you can find it in a way or another in the revealed will, in the revelation, and vice versa. But what is established by one is not necessarily uh, uh, detailed by the other. Therefore, the obligation is always universal and revelational at the same time, except that it can be clearly universal and subtle, subtly uh, revelational and vice versa. So, actually, the, the, in, in, in all cases, the obligation is always or yeah, is always revelational and universal at the same time. For instance. But the, the only difference is what? Is that sometimes an obligation is clearly defined by revelation and clear, clearly detailed by it, but not by universe or vice versa. Sometimes it's clearly defined by the universe, but not by revelation. For instance, prayer. This is an obligation that is defined by, in details by the revelation. But is it also a universal obligation? It's a, is it also... Um, uh, an obligation that is established by the universe? Yes, because in the fitra you aspire to God. So it's already, it's also established by the, by the universe. You aspire to worship God. But it's, it's the, uh, so, so this is why we said here, it's clearly revelational, but subtly universal. And it can be the other way around. Sometimes it's clearly established by the universe, but in Revelation you can only find general indications to it. So in any, ha in any ways, all the obligations are always revelational and universal at the same time. That's it. <laughs>